Good day, everybody. Rob here at WesternPacificWeather.com, and it's currently the 23rd of January, 2011, right around 06 uh, Zulu, for those of you worldwide watching this today. And we have two tropical cyclones down in the southern Pacific right now. We have Wilma just off screen here, off towards the east here, kind of seeing some of the outflow right in here. And also we have Anthony here. Now, this is the one we're going to talk about in this update right in here because it is the closest to a large population right now, and it actually looks like it's going to be making landfall in the long term here very potential for a, a pretty significant cyclone making landfall here in Queensland the already devastated area from uh, Brisbane all the way up to Cairns for flooding the last several uh, weeks out into the last several months being seen uh, an abundant amount of rain and this is going to exasperate that situation right in there but currently though uh, let's zoom in on this system winds are at 45 gusting up to 55 knots it's moving out towards the southeast relatively slowly seeing very good equatorial outflow along the northern periphery of the system. It doesn't look too organized on this IR shot right in here, but trust me, there is a, a pretty strong wind field within it. You actually can see some of the rotation on here over the last several frames. And if you look here on this uh, still vis shot right in here, you can see that very well organization along the northern periphery, all that inflow coming in, the equatorial outflow, and also uh, pretty much overall organization with that lower cumulus uh, convective clouds here near the center of the core. No eye developing out of this yet. Not expecting to at this time, though. Still have that sustained winds at 45 knots so the equivalent of a tropical storm out here but the organization is there for further development actually showing some of the uh, microwave imagery in here you can see those uh, lower bands right in here showing those thunderstorm clouds right in here some of precipitation there showing the higher amount of precipitation you can see that overall rotation here it's all just offshore of cans right in here not seeing the precip there right this moment actually if you look at a webcam out of cans showing about cirrus uh, partly cloudy skies Found this at actually at a CansWeatherWebcam.com. Uh, it's dot au here, uh, showing some basically that series in the upper levels. Uh, pretty indicative of a storm just offshore, pretty far away here. But um, they're probably going to be watching this uh, website fairly closely over the next several days here. Fairly good rate in here. Actually, the barometric pressure off just actually you can see just towards the right side of this so barometric pressure graph right in here, showing a gradual drop in pressure, showing that developing storm just off towards the east there. So where is this storm gonna go? And uh, what's going to happen with this as far as it making landfall on uh, cans and when's that going to happen? Well, uh, this is just my thoughts on it. I took a combination of several models, also looked at streamline analysis and kind of threw together a couple charts right in here. Well, right now we do have this uh, tropical storm right in here. It's our tropical cyclone. It's engulfed in the uh, monsoonal trough located throughout this area right in here. And you also have an area of high pressure farther down the south here. Now, typically the storm is going to drift off towards the south, but actually it looks like it's going to track back towards the west. And that's mainly because as it begins to track towards the south here it's actually going to bump right into this high pressure right in here and it began to uh, basically kind of go back towards the north here towards the lowest pressure now I like to think of tropical cyclones as uh, basically water running downhill it's never going to want to go towards this area of high pressure it's going to want to go back towards that troughing so you're going to actually see a southeasterly progression then it's actually going to turn around and head back towards the north and eventually back towards uh, Queensland up here and then coming out into the uh, 25th and possibly into the 26th you're going to actually see the system develop up towards cyclone strength. That's why it's colored in now. Uh, basically due to even more equatoria outflow up in here. Wind shear is going to start to subside. It's still going to have this high temperatures out in here. Remain relatively stationary, but it's going to develop even stronger. Then even looking out and towards the 27th and to the 28th. Still very long term. Still a um, large amount of change. Very possible out here. But combination of a few of the models, specifically GFS and no gaps, puts a tropical cyclone making landfall right around 65 gusting up to 70 knots just between Queensland or excuse me between Cairns and Townsville on Queensland right in here uh, not looking to uh, actually looking pretty bleak through that area right now still a large potential of change right now but as of this uh, time actually looking at precipitation extending out this is this basically cloud band showing where that precipitation could possibly extend out towards on those days towards the end of this month right now and also looking at winds uh, definitely up in that cyclone or severe cyclone strength area about 65 gusting up to 70 knots and even higher at times it's very possible but here looking at JTWC that's a joint typhoon warning center out of Pearl Harbor and showing their warning on it they do have that easterly progression on the 24th and the 25th by the time it starts to bump into that high pressure it'll swing back around out towards the west here and they have this very very large cone they're pretty confident on the turnaround here coming back towards the west but the cone extends all the way uh, just north of uh, Townsville here all the way out towards Kansas and even out towards Papua New Guinea very possible the storm makes its way up there 
there. If it does go eventually go back this way, I've really not seen a storm go towards the equator like that. Now it's not really uh likely but if it does it eventually will fizzle out due to lack of Coriolis up there just turn into a big blob of convection likely but right now uh, from what I'm seeing where the models are showing it where the streamlines indicating it looks like it's actually gonna make landfall along northern Queensland right up in this area now I really do want to note that the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia is not picking up on this just yet they actually but they're only going out about 48 hours right now this is the 23rd right now about this time right in here uh, so eventually you're gonna see this move out towards the 25th now I'm not expecting that swing around towards the 20 until the 25th into the 26th where it'll start coming back towards the west so beer them out mirror out it should be being kind of uh, conservative at this time but uh, we look into tonight into tomorrow to see if they're gonna start making that swing and making the storm eventually tracking back towards the west here now I do want to note that they do have a slowdown in the storm you see, actually see the difference from the 23rd into the 24th here and then 24th into the 25th the uh, storm really starts to slow down between those two times so that could be the first step of them step of them actually making that first warning where the storm will start to swing back around back towards Queensland here now I want to discuss a, a little weather tidbit right now. I have said streamline analysis a few times. If you're not familiar with that, that's basically the overall wind flow, the background flow around these storms. Well, right now, this is pretty current, uh, showing the uh, wind flow going towards the southeast here, out towards New Caledonia, and that's where the storm is actually tracking towards at this time. But if we actually look out towards the 25th into the 26th, you start to see a high pressure begin to ridge in, as we noted earlier, with the high pressure just off towards the south here. The wind flow is going to be kind of coming from the south at this time. Now, the wind flow going off towards the southeast, uh, really starting to break down. It's going to be going out towards the north. And if we even go farther out towards the, actually, I'm just going to scroll down here, out towards uh, the uh, 26 here, you really begin to see that wind flow coming from the southeast, the overall background flow. And this is what I believe is going to pick this storm up by the 26th into the 27th. And eventually move it out towards the the west but that is all I got for today, everybody. I do want to mention by no means my professional meteorologist for the South Pack. We're an official uh, weather service down here. If you are in the Queensland area, make sure you stay uh, close to uh, tune towards the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia for these uh, official weather uh, warnings on this system. And also, though, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, though, from me, from what I can help you, though, uh, I'll see what I can do is uh, you can email me here at westernpacificweather.com or also you can find me at storm2k.org. Am I posting this video? there as well a plenty of meteorological discussion and scientific discussion on this storm there as well so i hope everybody has a great day stay safe out there and continue to watch your uh, local warnings thanks bye